you can be healed by someone else's faith. Right? Now, I know that for some people it's a big stretch because that's part of the theology of the church in some areas that a person, if they're going to get healed, they have to have their own faith to do it. That is not true. Uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 16, when Peter showed, Peter and John go to the beautiful gate, or the, I'm sorry, they, yeah, to the, uh, they're going uh, toward the beautiful gate. They're going to the temple, actually. And they're going there to pray. And the, the man is laying there. And Peter walks up to him and says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. See, that's the thing. Peter knew he had something to give. And he did have something to give. And it was his faith that raised that man up. Because later in verse 16, he says, It was the name of Jesus and faith in that name that made that man strong. That man didn't have faith in the name of Jesus. Peter had faith in the name of Jesus. So that man was healed by somebody else's faith. Lazarus was raised from the dead by somebody else's faith. Technically Jesus's. Amen? Because it wasn't Lazarus. Right? <laughs> so you can be healed by someone else's faith. As a matter of fact, if you look at the Roman centurion in Matthew chapter 8, Jesus said, the Roman centurion, remember he came and said, my servant lies at home sick of a palsy. Jesus said, I'll come heal him. The centurion said, you don't have to. You just give a command and it'll work. And Jesus said, I hadn't found this kind of faith. What kind of faith? The faith that the centurion had. And he said, you go your way. And he said, your servant's healed. But he didn't even say that, actually. He said, go your way and be it unto you as you bleed. And so he went home and found out his servant was healed. But it was the centurion's faith that healed his servant. See, all we have to do is provide the faith. God provides the power. When you mix faith and power together, there's a divine chemical reaction that happens. And that's called a miracle. It's called healing. It's called whatever you need. It happens whenever you mix your faith with God's power. Amen? Amen. Now, and so we're going to show you even how to do that tonight. So, first off, you can be healed by someone else's faith. Uh, and that's one. I'm going to try to give you at least two for each one of these points. And there's not a lot of them. But uh, the second one is Mark 16, verse 18. In Mark 16, 18, it says that believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So it doesn't say anything about the sick having faith. Why would they have faith whenever it's the believer that's required to lay hands? And so a believer lays hands on the sick and the sick recover. Now, I do want to point this out. Many people think that the word recover means that the person will gradually get better. <clears throat> that's not what that word means. If you look up the Greek word used there, it literally means, and it says it this way, that they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick and they shall take as their own possession their healing. Now, that's the key. See, a believer lays hands, but you have to take the healing as your own possession. In other words, this is mine, and right now I have it. Amen? Now, that goes right along with Mark chapter 11, verse 23, that whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Amen? So, tonight, that's what we're going to be doing. Now, I will tell you, I'm not looking for your faith. If you have faith, that's wonderful. And I'll join my faith with yours, and it'll get the job done. If you don't have faith, I got faith. We've seen God do this so many times before. Honestly, it doesn't even really take much faith anymore, just because we've seen it so many times. You know, the more you see something, the less faith you need in it. Amen? And yet, the more your faith grows. Now, tell me that's not a, a kingdom-type statement. Amen? And so we've seen God do amazing things all over the earth. And so tonight, if you don't have faith, don't worry about it. Maybe, well, I've been prayed for before. Well, that, so what? What does that matter? You know, it, it really doesn't matter. We were in Poland, and there was a lady that came to me and said, my, my friend is here, and she's never been able to walk without crutches. Her feet, her ankles were literally at birth welded together. In other words, they couldn't move. She couldn't move her feet like we can. And her feet were welded together. And so she had to move using the crutches because she couldn't walk and push. So she had to use crutches. She said, my friend, <clears throat> she said she, he, she's been prayed for by everybody. And she went through the list of people and some well-known people. And she said, but she's been prayed for by everybody. She wants to know if it's worth her coming tonight to the healing service. 
And I said, well, she, if she's been prayed for by everybody, she's probably this full right now. All I got to do is add a little bit, put her over the top. This is a done deal. I said, I said tell her to come on. I said, she's probably so full of faith and power at this point. It's a, a miracle she hadn't already healed. I said, so just tell her to come on. <clears throat> and then whenever it came time, she was sitting on the front row and sitting there with her crutches and had them under her arms. And when I walked up to her, <clears throat> it's funny because I said, and I've never done this either, but as I walked up to her, uh, she started, she goes, do I just stand up? And I, I said, well, hang on, let me lay hands on you. I mean, you got to make it legal. You know, you can lay hands. <laughs> and so I, but I, I reached out and I put my hand on her head. And, it, and we have it on video. We don't have it available to show. But you can see it on our, on our website and stuff. But you'll see when I put my hand on her head. And, I, and I'd never done this before. But when I put my hand on her head, then I slid my hand around the back of her neck, right where her spinal cord it connects. And I put my hand there for a second and commanded her to be healed. Took my hand off. I said, all right, now stand up. And she started to stand. And then when she started to stand up, she pushed the crutches back. And then she took off running and jumping and screaming. <laughs> Amen. So that's why we have seen God do some amazing things. And so that's why tonight I'm telling you, I'm not, like I said, I'm not demeaning what you've gone through. But I'm here to tell you what you've been going through. You ain't going through no more. It ends tonight. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, and I don't care what it is. So, now.